So, so would you say like, cause you mentioned, you mentioned basically like you, you didn't have anybody to, to guide you to make the right decisions when you were fighting business wise. Is, yeah. is that your motivation to get into the box of business so you could help the younger guys? Yeah. A hundred percent because by me promoting now and I do six, seven shows, I got to admit that a lot of times the fighters are the problem too, because a lot of times it, it goes both ways. Like, yeah, you got a lot of crooks in boxing. That's a hundred percent because this is the only sport that you can come into and be unqualified and get into it. Yeah. You could just be a dude off the streets and this guy's just becoming trainers that never even learned up under a good trainer or never fought. And I'm sure you see that a lot. Oh like my God. Become a trainer. Uh, if you want. <laughs> yeah. And, and like you see it on Instagram all the time, guys with the, with the pad routine. And it, and it, and it annoys me because they got that <laughs> from my teachers. Right. But it's nothing. It looked good to people, but it's not the way that Floyd and Roger, it's a total difference working with them. Like it was a purpose to it. It was a specific way to do things, but now you got dudes thinking they could just watch YouTube. That's why I stopped training. Cause it's too much of a gimmick. Like I came up under Mayweather. So even when I first started training in Devin, I was one of the only ones that was doing the mint work that looked flashy, but it's a purpose to it when I do it, because I got it straight from the horses. Yeah. Cause Floyd, them the one that made that up. Like, by like seeing the Midwest where I'm from, that that like we've been doing that kind of stuff. Like, you know, like my very first boxing trainer, he came up with like Joe Lewis and them. Okay. I, I've been ending with the double jab and doing the combinations. You see, that's a Midwest thing that we've been doing. Like, um, we you would see that in the local gym from with kids doing it. Like, um, you know, and then when I guess when YouTube everybody start watching it. And, <laughs> You just, I just see people copying even stuff that I do. I'm just like, man, this is insane. I can't even – this this made me not even want to train. But it's an advantage, though, for any fighter that I train because they're not learning the proper techniques of things. When I do it with Devin, see, Devin grew up under the Mayweather system like me. So if anybody think that they're going to train that way and beat him, they got another thing coming because he know the correct way and the purpose of doing it. Yeah. You, uh, you mentioned the Mayweather system. How would you define the Mayweather system of boxing? Um, well, all right. Well, here's something that people don't know. Like, see, Floyd Sr. is an artist. Like, he could draw real good. Like, he could have been, like, a professional artist. Like, he could draw. Really? He draw, like. No, he can paint as good enough to put it up in the museum. Like. Oh, okay. Like, so, by him being an artist, he took what he learned from the Eddie Fudges, the Dale Williams, the people that he came up under, um, Tony Tucker Sr. So you got to think, all of those guys trained to Joe Lewis is the, the greatest fighters of all time. So the yeah. guy that Floyd Sr. learned from trained probably 70% of the greatest fighters ever. So he took by him being an artist, he made the pad work up and just put what he learned from them and made a routine out of it that was fast so he put the shoulder roll and all that kind of stuff in certain how to catch do this and that how to throw the correct punches combinations yeah. but it's a specific way to do it yeah. when i how watch to, these how guys to pivot into position to throw the next punch yeah you know, like him and roger now and he passed it to his younger brother who was roger so and then roger i gotta shout jeff out too because you know that's my guy i work with him some too you know uh that's the youngest brother but I think that they were just born to do it. Like, man, because, I mean, they just, for him to make something like that up just show how much of a genius he is. Because when you look and you see, like, even when I did it or when Floyd did it or Devin did it, that's original stuff. Like, people just became copycats, like, maybe in the last seven, eight years. Imagine somebody trying to copy the peekaboo style from Custom Auto. <laughs> well, you there's just threw out of the gym. Yeah. And the, the the there's been some pretty low, low level fighters that have tried, but that's why they're low level. You know, you can't you can't you know it's a it's a one of a kind style. Yeah, and if it's not coming from them, you shouldn't even play around with it because it might look good. That's more for the trainer to look good. But back then, you you wasn't seeing nobody with Floyd Senior, and Roger, and a couple more Midwest guys doing that because you know back back where we from, you you see the flashy boxing where dudes is, you know, I was seeing that when I first started boxing. You see dudes in the gym. Even though Emmanuel Stewart wasn't into that stuff, a lot of his techniques is still the same. Mayweather and Roger, Floyd and Roger just did it in a faster motion and, and added their own. So so basically what Floyd learned from the Dale Williams and all those guys, he just put it, he's an artist. So he real, 
I mean, even the music artists like Floyd that made recorded albums and everything. So that just had to be God given for him to do that and to give it to his son since he was an infant. And, um, you know, Devin been around it since he was seven and eight and I've been around it since a teenager. So it's kind of hard. It's going to be kind of hard to beat Devin. If your trainers is mimicking any of that, he already got one up on you. And yeah. I don't care who that is. It can be the top fighters. If you trying to mimic that, you're not going to beat Devin Haney doing something that he's been doing since he was seven or eight in the correct form. You got to be yourself. Be yourself and do what you do. Listen, good. I appreciate the original trainers like the Derrick James, Ronnie Shields. Even I already see you uh, interviewing Stacey McKinley. Like, Absolutely. I work, with him. I work yeah. with him some. Oh, yeah? Yeah, being at Don King camp. You know, another time. It's, see, most top trainers really don't have big names right in this no. era. But most of these people won't be able to identify a top trainer. I can hear a guy for three minutes and, and know that they're authentic and see – Number one, with me, I want to know where you got this from and who taught it to you firsthand. Because I see dudes pop up in the gym. trying. It, it'd be dudes at the Mayweather gyms trying to be like Roger and Floyd. I'm like, the audacity of these dudes is <laughs> sick, man. I'm like, man, this you guys are stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, these dudes is crazy. But, yeah, it's, um, you know, a lot of the trainers that, <clears throat> you know, I respect as guys that do their own thing. 